Hey guys, Tyler Hansman here with Tyler Hansman Performance. So today we're going to talk about the role of uh, slower tempo training in your kind of performance enhancement training. Alright, so in a sport like baseball, it's dominated by high velocity movements, right? Which means we probably need to train fast in order to play fast. I think that's a pretty obvious statement. So where is the place for this kind of slower tempo training? Well, I think one of the things we need to think about is how we're using uh, both stiffness and compliance when we're talking about both health and performance levels, all right? So we know that if we want higher performance, we need greater stiffness, right? And that's important to a point where it then becomes an injury risk. So if we think about a tendon, right, what it's doing is it's attaching muscle to bone. So bone is really stiff, right? So it makes sense that that end of the tendon is going to be more stiff. Whereas muscle is more compliant, that end of the tendon is going to be more compliant. This makes sense, right? So the greater stiffness we have, basically the greater energy transfer, energy amplification we're going to get from that tendon. But the risk factor is we tend to get more uh, muscle strains and pulls because then when the tendon's not stretching up, the muscle is forced to stretch more, right? And so that's when we get these injuries, hamstring pulls, things like that. So the other, the other piece to this is compliance. So that's basically when the tendon stretches more, right? So one of the examples that Dr. Keith Barr uses is talking about when we're putting uh, like a rubber band around a really heavy rock. If we were trying to pull that along the ground, we would just get stretchiness from the tendon and that rock really wouldn't move, right? Whereas if we put a rope around it, it's gonna stretch a little bit, but then we're gonna get that rock moving along there. So we need both stiffness and compliance to some degree because compliance is gonna allow us to stay healthy. But if we take that too far, we're gonna see a decrease in performance. Whereas if we take stiffness too far, we're gonna see an increase in injury. Okay, so we talk about training for stiffness. What that means is we're talking about fast movements. Because when we train for stiffness, the muscle and tendon kind of work like a sheet, right? So again, one of the examples, going back to Dr. Keith Barr, that he uses is getting into the water, right? If you belly flop from the high dive, right, that water's gonna act like a sheet because you're moving really fast. The same thing's kind of true with the tendon and muscle. So when we're moving fast, we're gonna increase stiffness, right? Because we're not gonna break any of those kind of cross links in the tendon, but we're gonna add cross links, right, by moving faster. So we're increasing our stiffness. Whereas when we're training for compliance, we want slow movement, right? So sometimes you'll see tempo training, a lot of people like to throw in slow eccentrics, that kind of thing, slow concentrics, whatever it might be. And the thing is, the research seems to show us that the, con the, the contraction type or the muscle action type isn't actually that important. The important thing is the speed of it, so it needs to be done slowly. Because what's happening is we're getting this shear along the tendon, so we're breaking a lot of cross links. And even though we're going to create more cross links after the fact, it's not going to replace the ones we've broken. So functionally, we're creating a more compliant tendon by doing that. So practically, what does this look like in terms of training? Well, I think one of the things that's important is that really five, five to ten minute training sessions are going to kind of maximize like our tendon health piece. Okay? And they need to be separated by about six hours, is kind of what the research tells us there. Um, so I think this also needs to be kind of personalized or individualized to the athlete, right? If we have a really stiff athlete, a really fast guy who's getting maybe a lot of injuries, then he's probably going to need more kind of compliance type training. Right, so it's going to be probably a bigger focus in his program. Maybe he has more total sessions per day and per week. Whereas we have this big, strong, maybe a slower guy who isn't very good at the higher velocity movements, he's going to train, need to train for more stiffness. And while that compliance probably still needs to be a part of it, if he's doing some heavy strength training, that may actually be enough for someone like him. Or maybe we have one or two sessions per week, something along those lines. Right? But, but for the faster guy who's getting more injuries and that type of thing, compliance is going to be a bigger focus for his program. So what does this actually look like? Well, probably about six hours after your kind of high performance session for that day, that's probably a good time to throw in these kind of like health-based sessions where we're doing uh, tempo work or long duration ISO holds, things like that. So, so the way that you'll probably, uh, a good way to do it may be to kind of throw in one to three long duration ISO hold type movements, all right, and accumulate about two minutes per movement there. So if we're doing, a split squat ISO hold, if you're an absolute beginner, you may want to start with like 25 to 35 seconds kind of per side and try to go through maybe three to four sets, try to accumulate about two minutes per side. And that may be enough for that single session if we're talking about kind of looking at, you know, knee health. 
right? Whereas if we're looking for you're having an ankle problem, maybe we need to do that with a floating heel. We can do things like that. So we can get kind of creative with how we're doing this. We're looking at upper body stuff. If we're having maybe anterior shoulder problems, an isometric hold of a push-up may work well. So, so we can kind of, our imagination is really the only limiting factor here. But we do want to do it about six hours after our um, kind of high performance session. We want to be about five to 10 minutes. The other piece of this is the nutritional aspect. So a collagen supplement of some type may actually be a good idea about 60 minutes or so before you're going to do that health-based session. That will tend to work pretty well. If you're interested in kind of learning more about this topic, I wrote a full article on collagen supplementation with the science behind it um, and how to kind of use that. So uh, check out the link below if you kind of need uh, more information on that. But this is kind of how I would program um, tempo work, isometric work, that kind of thing for health-based sessions for my athletes. 